what's up? It's Madeline and we're here to talk wine tools you cannot live without. Beyond a bottle of wine, what do you absolutely have to have to enjoy wine to its fullest? And believe it or not, there's a few things that will actually make your wine tasting experience way better. The first thing you need to do is to break into a bottle of wine and for that, my friends, you need a wine opener. This little guy right here is called the Waiter's Friend and it's the most pragmatic tool in the business. If you love this and want to get one, we actually sell them in our Wine Folly shop. And they're awesome! For the super professional, you might consider something a lot fancier. This is a very similar looking tool and maybe even a little harder to use and to maintain, but it is a piece of art. This sucker will run you about 10 times as much, coming in around 150 bucks per opener. Really amazing though, it's handmade in France. Incredible. The second thing you'll need to enjoy wine is the proper glass. Now, when it comes to getting a glass, you really want something that leaves enough room above the wine to communicate the aromas into your nose. You also want one with a lip that's thin enough so that you can actually taste the fluid. Uh, this one is one that we sell in our store, which I absolutely love, but they run from about maybe $7 on the cheap side for glass that's decent to about $30 for something like this, which is crystal glassware. And then on the higher end, 60 bucks a stem for the really, really fancy stuff like Zalto. I'll link an uh, article in the bottom on picking out the right shape based on the types of wine that you like to drink. So check that one out if you're interested in learning more. All right, moving along. This bottle is great for storing wine, but doesn't do a whole lot for aromas. And for that, my friends, a handy dandy decanter goes a long way. See, what happens is when you pour the wine into the bottle, it causes it to aerate. It exposes the wine to oxygen molecules. Those molecules exchange with molecules in the wine, making it taste a lot fruitier, fresher, and more delicious. But if you don't wanna get a big old decanter like one of these, you might try something like this. Now this is a wine aerator. And while it sounds funny, it does about the same work of a decanter in a lot quicker of a time period and a lot less space. They're not the fanciest looking things in the world and most of them are made out of plastic, but they work like a champ for decanting, especially cheap bottles of wine. On the high end, you might try to get something like this, a super fine crystal decanter you pour wine in one side, it comes out the other. It's a beautiful piece of art. Yet, these will run you $200 to $300 a pop. And to be honest with you, these suckers are so hard to clean. Once you've broken into a bottle of wine, it's probably not gonna last more than a couple of days open. But you can keep that taste still going strong with a wine preserver. Something cheap like this VacuVen does a pretty good job for about 10 days open. Now it creates a vacuum inside the bottle, but there's still oxygen in there. So eventually the wine will go bad. So if you really wanna preserve your wine, consider something like this. This sucker is called a Coraven. It uses an Aragon gas system that comes through a little pokey needle that punches through the cork of the bottle and actually pours wine uh, through the needle. So you don't actually remove the cork at all when using a Coravan properly. Of course, this is gonna run you up. These cost between two and $300 and the Argon capsules will run you about 60 cents per glass. Definitely something to have if you have a serious collection of wine and you love to explore and taste it. But I gotta say, for the price, it's not for the novice. The next thing I keep a ton of in my kitchen drawer are these little guys. This sucker is a champagne stopper. All you gotta do is put it on to the bottle and close the top and it'll keep your champagne good. The bubbles stay inside the bottle for about three or four days. It's really great if you can't finish that bottle and you wanna enjoy it the next day. The next thing I like to keep around is not that obvious. So on the cheap, you can get one of these. 
What is this? This is a flour sack. Or if you have a baby, it's one of those spit up rags. <laughs> but it works great for polishing glassware. You take your glass, you can hold it on the base of the glass while polishing the inside of the glass. Super handy dandy. On the higher end, you might consider getting a microfiber version, which does an exceptional job at polishing glassware. We actually make this one at Wine Folly and you can pick it up in our store. It's awesome. Finally, the last thing I love to keep around me is a lot of inspiration. And that comes in the form of great books. For people who are super visual like myself, you've got to check out the Wine Folly Magnum Edition. There are so many fun visual ways to dive into wine, even while tasting it in this book. For the medium level geek, Jancis Robinson's new World Atlas of Wine, the eighth edition, is an awesome encyclopedic reference on some of the most crucial wine regions in the world to know. For you wine freaks, you might even invest in a heavy seven pound tome such as this one. Over 1300 grapes identified and discussed in this awesome, awesome reference book. Oh my God, guys. So while I was recording that video, I accidentally spilled wine on my beautiful white pants. So that brings me to the last essential wine tool you absolutely must have. All right, so we're gonna have to let that dry to see how it comes out, but so far so good. All right guys, that's what I've got for you on essential wine tools that I absolutely cannot live without. I hope this finds you awesome. Until next